The Jataka tales are a collection of stories, from Buddhist literature, that recount the previous lives of Prince Siddhartha Gautama, who later became known as the Buddha, and are believed to be narrated by the Buddha himself. According to Buddhist tradition, before attaining enlightenment, the Buddha to be lived countless lives, as both humans and animals, accumulating experiences and wisdom, along the way. These tales are found in various texts, including the Pali Canon, which is the primary scripture of Theravada Buddhism. Estimated around 550 stories, the Jatakas are considered one of the oldest forms of Buddhist literature, dating between 300 BC to 400 AD. Each Jataka story illustrates moral principles, ethical conduct, and spiritual lessons through the adventures and experiences of the Buddha in his past lives. They emphasize universal values, such as compassion, generosity, selflessness, and wisdom, while also highlighting the importance of overcoming obstacles and cultivating positive qualities on the spiritual path. So, join us and prepare to be inspired by the tales of the Bodhisattva's noble deeds. Mahakapi Jataka Once, Bodhisattva was born as a great monkey, named Mahakapi. He ruled over a large troop of monkeys, who lived in a flourishing forest of Himalayas, near River Ganges. There was a huge banyan tree, that bore fruits with divine fragrance, and flavor. Though the Mahakapi and his troop took utmost care to see that no fruit grew or fell from the branch that stretched towards the Ganges, one ripe fruit did fall into the river and was caught in the net of a fisherman who showed the fruit to the king of Banaras. When the king went towards the tree and saw the monkeys eating the fruits, he ordered his archers to shoot them. The frightened monkeys approached King Mahakapi, who comforted them and told them not to worry. He tried to make a bamboo bridge between the tree and another tree on the other side of the river. But somehow, the bamboo shoot fell short of the length required to form the bridge. Realizing this, he stretched himself at the end so that his herd could pass safely over on his back. The monkeys escape, treading on the back of Mahakapi. The king was filled with deep emotion, to see how the Mahakapi endangered his own life, for the safety of his retinue. The king commanded his attendants, to safely bring him down. Thus, the Mahakapi Jataka, serves as a timeless lesson, in compassion, sacrifice, and leadership, showcasing the noble qualities, embodied by the Buddha, in his past lives. Savanasama Jataka Once upon a time, when Brahmadatta was ruling in Banaras, the Bodhisattva was born as a Brahman. He grew older, and married a bride of his own rank, who bore him three daughters named Nanda, Nandavathi, and Sundari Nanda. The Bodhisattva died, leaving his widow and daughters in great poverty. But, he was born again, into the world as a golden mallard, endowed with consciousness of its former births. Growing up, the bird viewed its own magnificent size and golden plumage, and remembered that, previously it had been a human being. Discovering his wife and daughters were living on the charity of others, the mallard thought that, if he could give them one golden feather, from time to time, they would be able to live in comfort. So, he flew to the place where they were living, 
and sat on the roof. After a while, the wife and girls noticed the mallard, and asked him, who he was. He told him that, he was their father who had died, and he had come to help them. He also told him that, he would give them a golden feather every time, which they could sell, and become rich. Saying that, he gave them, one of his feathers, and departed and from time to time, he returned to give them another feather, and with the proceeds of their sale, the woman and her daughters grew prosperous. But the woman, however, looked at the golden mallard, and became greedy. She thought that, if she had all the feathers at once, she would be really rich. So, the next time when the mallard came, the woman grabbed him, and pulled out all his feathers. But the mallard's feathers had the property that, if they were plucked out against his wish, they became ordinary feathers. The woman did not know this, and all she got was a lot of worthless feathers. And now, the poor mallard, though he stretched his wings, could not fly without his feathers. As time went on, his feathers grew again but he flew away from his ungrateful family, and never came back again. Thus, this tale teaches that it is important to be moderate in desires, and be content with what you have, no matter how little it may be. Vesantara Jataka The Vesantara Jataka is one of the most revered and beloved stories in the Jataka tales, recounting the virtuous deeds of Prince Vesantara, a previous incarnation of the Buddha. In this tale, Prince Vesantara was known for his extraordinary generosity. His supreme act of benevolence came when he decided to give away his most prized possession, the magical white elephant of his kingdom, to appease a drought that threatened his people. Despite his father's initial reservations, Prince Vesantara's compassionate nature led him to donate not only the elephant, but also his children, and wife, to a wandering Brahmin, who requested him as gifts. Although his actions caused distress, among his family, and subjects, Prince Vesantara remained steadfast, in his commitment to selflessness. Ultimately, the divine beings intervened, returning his family and elephant to him, and showering the kingdom with prosperity. The tale of Prince Vesantara teaches profound lessons about generosity, selflessness, and the boundless compassion of the Buddha in his previous lives. Sankapala Jataka once the Bodhisattva was born as a prince of Rajagaha, which is modern Rajgir, Bihar, having the name Duyodhana. When he came of age his father, who was the king of Rajagaha, abdicated the throne in his favor, and renounced the world to become an ascetic. He lived in a forest on the bank of the Kanapana river, which flew from the Sankapala lake, near the Mount Gandaka. The lake was named after the lord of the lake Sankapala, a Naga or the Serpent King. Although Sankapala was a Naga, yet he was kind, and compassionate. He was also religious, and was greatly impressed by the lifestyle and doctrine, of the ascetic. Soon he became his disciple and visited him frequently to hear his discourses. One day Duyodhana, the son of the ascetic and the king of Rajgir somehow happened to know the whereabouts of his father, and visited his hermitage. There, he met Sankapala, and was impressed by his style, and ideals, and thought of becoming like him. However, Duyodhana died, and was reborn in the Naga world as a king, 
bearing the same name Sankapala, because once he had desired to become like the Naga king. He began to spend the holy days in the human realm atop an anthill, where he would not be distracted. One day, he was lying on his anthill near the Kanapana, to keep the holy fast. As he was engrossed in the meditations, sixteen men came, and seized him, and pierced his body with stakes, to make holes to fasten him, with ropes. Though strong, the king of the serpent, did not show any anger to resist them. When the men were dragging him to the city, a pious man named Alara, felt pity for the snake, and had him released. Nalapana Jataka Once the Bodhisattva was a king of monkeys, and he administered a troop of 80,000. To protect him from danger, he had instructed him to ask him before eating any fruit they had not seen before, or drinking from any water source, that they had not used before. As the troop roamed the forest, some monkeys came upon a new lake, so they sat and waited for the Bodhisattva to arrive. He examined the shore, and saw that all footprints led into the water, but none led out. So he knew that an ogre haunted it. When the frustrated ogre saw, that the monkeys were not going to enter the water, he emerged and begged the monkeys to go in, so he could eat them. The Bodhisattva, however, came up with a plan to drink the water, without entering it. He took a reed from the shore, and blew into the end of it, miraculously turning it hollow. He then commanded, that all reeds growing around this lake turn hollow, and they have stayed so ever since. The monkey king and his followers, 80,000 monkeys took a seat around the lake, and used the hollow reeds to suck and drink water from it. Thus, this tale teaches us that, we must be careful when dealing with unfamiliar things, and we must use strategies to be safe, while saving others as well. Mahasalava Jataka Once the Bodhisattva was the king of Varanasi. He was wise, and generous. He had expelled one of his advisors from the kingdom, for making personal use of the royal harem, and this man later became the chief advisor, to the king of Kosala. The ex-advisor convinced this king that, the Bodhisattva was a weak leader and could easily be conquered. Upon hearing his plan, the king of Kosala suspected that his advisor was a traitor sent to lead him into a trap, but the advisor said he could prove it. He told the king to send some men to massacre a village across the border, then he would see that they would not be punished. The king did so. The murderous attackers were captured and sent to the palace, where the Bodhisattva asked, why they had killed the villagers. When they answered that, it was because they were poor, and could not find work, the Bodhisattva made them promise not to do it again, gave them money, and set them free. But the king of Kosala was still not convinced. So, he repeated the test twice more, the last time inside the capital city, and after the same result he realized his new advisor was right about the Bodhisattva being a thoroughly righteous man, and no threat at all. Now the confident king of Kosala set out on conquest with his army and elephants. Varanasi had the bravest, fiercest warriors in all of India, and when word spread of the coming invasion, they begged the Bodhisattva to set them loose, as did his advisors. But the Bodhisattva was steadfast that he would not allow anyone to suffer, and he prohibited resistance. When the invaders arrived at the city, the Bodhisattva opened the gate and let them in. 
The effortlessly victorious king of Kosala ordered the Bodhisattva and his advisors bound and buried up to their necks in the cemetery, where at night jackals would come and eat them. At midnight the jackals arrived at the cemetery, to feast on corpses and found the buried men. When the first jackal approached the Bodhisattva, he bit into the beast's throat and did not let go. The captured jackal's howling sent his companions fleeing, and as it struggled to free itself, its legs dug up dirt around the Bodhisattva. After enough time had passed, the Bodhisattva released his bite, and let the jackal go. Then, through his mighty strength, he was able to dig himself out of the loosened dirt and free his advisors. In the meantime, two ogres had found a corpse lying right on the border of their territories and were quarreling over how to divide it. Since they could not decide, they dragged the body to the Bodhisattva and asked him to divide it. He agreed, but told them he first needed to freshen up. So, the ogres used their magical powers to bring him scented water, robes, perfumes, food, and beetle, all of which had been prepared for the king of Kosala. Refreshed, the Bodhisattva then told him to fetch the usurper's sword of state from his room. The Bodhisattva used it to part the corpse straight down the spine, and gave one half to each ogre. The Bodhisattva then asked the ogres to transport him to the king of Kosala's bedroom. Finding the king asleep, the Bodhisattva smacked him in the stomach with the flat of his sword. Struck with terror, he sat up and listened to the Bodhisattva explain how he managed to escape and get past all the guards into the room. Hearing the tale, the king realized he had made a mistake. He swore an oath of friendship, and asked the Bodhisattva for forgiveness, which was granted. The next day morning, the king of Kosala gathered all his men, praised the Bodhisattva, punished his chief advisor, and returned to his own kingdom. The Bodhisattva told those gathered around him that, it was only because of perseverance that he had been able to save his kingdom with no lives lost, and people must have faith that, doing good gives the best result. Sasa Jataka Long ago, when Brahmadatta was reigning in Baranasi, the Bodhisattva was born as a rabbit, living in a forest. On one side of this forest was a mountain, on another side, a river, and on a third side, a village. He had three friends, a monkey, a jackal, and an otter. The rabbit, being the wisest, regularly preached on moral matters. One evening, the rabbit looked at the sky and realized that the next day was the full moon. He reminded them that, giving alms brings great rewards, so they should feed any beggars who happened to approach them. The friends agreed, and each went to his own home. Early the next morning, they all went out to get food, to bring back to their homes, to eat later, when breaking their fasts. The otter found a string of seven fish, that a fisherman had buried in the sand, for safekeeping. The jackal entered the hut of a field watcher, who wasn't at home, and took a lizard and a jar of curds. And the monkey gathered mangoes in the forest. As the rabbit ate only grass, he did not gather any food, and realized that he would be unable to offer anything to any beggars, who came his way. So, he vowed to give his own flesh, if needed. The throne of Indra, king of the gods, became warm as the Bodhisattva made his selfless pledge, and when Indra divined the reason, 
he disguised himself as a Brahmin priest and put the Bodhisattva to the test. Indra first visited the otter, and said that, if he could get some food, for breaking his fast, he would be able to do, his priestly duties. The otter offered him, the seven fish, and asked him to stay in the forest, for a while. Indra replied that, he would come back later, for the food. He then made the same request, and got the same offers, from the jackal and monkey, before approaching the bodhisattva. Upon hearing Indra's request, the bodhisattva was filled with joy, and told him to prepare a fire, which he did. The bodhisattva shook himself three times, to avoid killing any insects, living in his fur, and then jumped into the flames like a swan, landing amidst lotuses. To his surprise, the bodhisattva felt no heat and wondered, what was happening. Indra then revealed himself, and explained that, he had come to test the bodhisattva's virtue. He told Indra that, he would have done the same, for even the lowliest person, and Indra said, the bodhisattva's virtue should be known for whole eternity. So he squeezed a mountain, and used its essence to paint a picture of the hair on the moon, for all to see. Kukura Jataka Once upon a time, when Brahmadatta was reigning in Banaras, the Bodhisattva was reborn as a dog, and he lived in a great cemetery, as the leader of several hundred dogs. One day, after the king had been out, having fun in his royal park, he arrived back at the palace after sunset. After amusing himself all day on the grounds, he came back to the city after sunset, and his servants left the carriage harness in the courtyard still hitched onto the chariot. That night the king's dogs came down, and gnawed the beautiful leatherwork. The king assumed, Dogs from outside the palace, must have snuck in through the sewer and done it. Enraged, the king ordered all dogs, other than his own, killed. When the slaughter began in the city, many dogs fled to the cemetery, and told the bodhisattva, what was happening. He knew, that no city dogs could breach the palace walls, so it must have been the king's own. The bodhisattva promised the other dogs, that, he would save them. Then he set out to meet with the king. By focusing his mind on thoughts of love, and the ten perfections of character, he was able to freely walk the city streets, and sneak into the palace, unmolested. He and the king discussed the situation, and the bodhisattva explained that, since the king had ordered certain dogs spared, even though he did not know, which dogs had actually gnawed the leather, he was following the four evil courses, that is, partiality, dislike, ignorance, and fear. And this was unbecoming of a king. Recognizing, that the bodhisattva was wise, the king asked if he knew, who the real culprits were. When the bodhisattva told him, it was his own purebreds, the king wanted proof, so the bodhisattva gave it to him. He told the king to mash up some grass, mix it with buttermilk, and make his dogs eat it. When it vomited, out came bits of leather. Impressed, the king offered to let the bodhisattva become king. Instead, the bodhisattva asked that the king listen to a sermon on righteousness. When it was finished, the king was so moved, that he commanded no living creatures be killed in the kingdom ever again, and that from then on, all dogs be fed the same fancy food, that he himself ate. Bhajajaniya Jataka Long ago, 
in the kingdom of Varanasi. The Bodhisattva was once a king's war horse, and he lived a life far more luxurious than most humans. The king gave the horse the best food and the best accommodation. His food was served in a golden dish, and his stall was perfumed and decorated with crimson curtains and flowers. One day, seven kings from nearby lands surrounded the kingdom of Varanasi and ordered his king to surrender or face a war. The king discussed strategy with his advisors, and they decided the best course of action was to send out their top soldier on the king's warhorse to battle all seven armies by himself. If this method failed, then they would consider a different plan. The soldier, along with the horse, fought heroically, captured six of the kings, and brought them back to the palace as prisoners. But while capturing the sixth, the horse was wounded. The soldier rode back to the palace gate, and started to put armor on another horse. But, when the horse, Bodhisattva, saw this, he thought to himself that no other horse was anywhere near as good as he was. If he didn't return to battle, the soldier and the king would surely be slain, and the kingdom would fall. So he told the soldier, to bind his wound to stop the bleeding, and then they rode out again, and captured the final king. His kingdom was saved, and the king came out to greet them. The Bodhisattva implored the king, to not kill the seven captured kings, but to make them swear an oath to never wage war on him again. Then, the Bodhisattva told the king, to rule with righteousness and charity for the rest of his life, and died. Nandivasala Jataka Once in the land of Gandhara, the Bodhisattva came to life, as a bull. When he was quite a tiny calf, he was presented by his owners to a Brahman. The Brahman called it Nandi Visala, and treated it like his own child, feeding the young creature on rice gruel and rice. As a result, he grew up exceptionally strong and completely loyal. He appreciated being so well cared for, and one day devised a plan to show his gratitude. He told the Brahman, to find someone to wager 1,000 coins, so that, his ox could pull 100 loaded carts. A wealthy merchant accepted the bet, and the owner loaded the carts, with sand, and stones, and harnessed up the bodhisattva at the front. To begin, he pulled out his goad stick, and shouted, Go, you rascal. Pull them, you rascal. But, upset by the name calling, the Bodhisattva didn't budge. The Brahman was depressed, over losing almost all his money, returned home, and lay down in grief. Then the Bodhisattva told the Brahman, that, the failure was his own fault. He had never broken anything brushed up against anyone, or made a mess. But still, he insulted him. His lesson delivered, the Bodhisattva told him to repeat the bet for two thousand coins. This time to begin, the Brahman stroked the Bodhisattva's back, and called out, Go, my fine fellow. Pull them, my fine fellow. Now, the Bodhisattva walked, until the one hundredth cart arrived, where the first cart had started. Not only did the owner, receive his agreed upon two thousand coins, but many impressed onlookers, also gave him money, which eventually passed into the hands of the Brahman. Thus, he gained greatly, because of the Bodhisattva. This story teaches, 
that speaking with kindness is more beneficial than using harsh words. Overall, the Jataka stories of the Buddha, stand as timeless parables of moral, and spiritual guidance, offering profound insights, into the nature of compassion, wisdom, and the human condition. They remind us, of the boundless potential for goodness, within each of us, and encourage us, to cultivate virtues, that lead to true happiness, and liberation. Thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed the Jataka Tales of Buddha. Do not forget to like, share, comment, and click the subscribe button on the video. Visit our channel www.youtube.com slash at Weaver's Nest. For more information, visit the website www.weaversnest.org